Hello everybody, my name is Eric Norland and I am the author of this book, From Four Royal Persian Stars to Jesus and the Sun. This was published in 2013 and I want to thank you for listening to my presentation here and we're going to take a look at the three wise men and they are mentioned in Matthew, the book of Matthew, and they are in the Greek translation, the Magi, which means magicians. And we're going to take a look at what the Magi did. They followed a star that was seen in the east. And here is Israel right here. Here's Bethlehem. Here's the Dead Sea. And then east of that is Persia. So they, they saw this star in the east. And so they followed that star. Wherever they were, if they were in the east in Persia, they must have gone farther east. And so it's a quandary why they would do this. But as I illustrated in my book, if they started here at this point right here, and in the evening they saw the star rising in the east, they would go east, and then the, during the night, they would have to go south because the star starts to rise up in the southern part of the sky. Then in the late evening, it goes west. So they would be actually going on this long route and wasting a lot of energy. They would go 12 miles here, or maybe more, 15 uh, plus 3, 18 miles when actually they only traveled two miles in diagonal. It wouldn't make any sense. And if they did that over three nights, they would start here, do the 18 mile journey, and then only go two miles. And it would be a huge waste of energy. So it really doesn't make sense. And then it says in the story in Matthew that the star stopped above Bethlehem. One thing we know is that stars don't stop. They are very far away, and it is because of the earth turning that it appears stars move. If the star stopped above Bethlehem, it meant that the earth stopped turning, and that would be impossible we would uh, be in big trouble and they would be, would have been in big trouble long ago if that happened so that can't be the case the story starts to kind of unravel and it mentions that the wise men visited the manger now the zodiac is the path that the sun follows during the year and there are 12 signs to the zodiac and it is called the path of the animals so they are there's many animal shapes like Leo the lion and uh, Taurus the bull so you could say that you are in a barn or a path of animals like a manger and maybe that's what the interpretation is. But then it's it's contested in uh, Matthew 2, 11. It says that the wise men went to the house where Jesus was born. So the story just kind of crumbles. Now, let's take a look at the zodiac. This is the path that the sun follows. And currently, the sun is in Pisces. It's right about here. And it's soon going to be moving into 
Aquarius. So back when the story of Jesus originated, the sun moved from Aries, the lamb, and it's interesting they, that uh, John the Baptist calls Jesus the lamb of God. It moves from the lamb, you can see it right here, zero, into Pisces, the fish. So, there are lots of fish and water-related motifs in the story of Jesus. And as you read the books of the Bible, uh, with uh, the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see it soon starts off with watery-related uh, motifs. For instance, his chief disciple was Peter, a fisherman. He turns water into wine. He walks on water. He stills a tempest over the water. He provides a draft of fish. He feeds 5,000 with two fish. He offers tribute money to pay taxes with, from a fish's mouth. He cures a blind man by the pool of Siloam. The soldier that's pierced Jesus' side sees water come out of Jesus' side. And there are many other sea-related, water-related, Sea of Galilee-related stories in Jesus' baptism in the river. And so that's because whoever created this story noticed that the sun was moving into the symbol of the fish, Pisces. So soon, in the next 150 years or so, the sun will move from Pisces into Aquarius. So here we see... Pisces, the sun started to move into Pisces, and right now it's almost on the verge of moving into Aquarius. That's the little man with the water jar. So somebody's probably going to create some new story with the man with the water jar and come up with yet another kind of mythological idea for us to unravel. Thank you for listening, and I hope you can read my book. There it is. Thank you. Bye-bye.